All right, so hey everybody, welcome to Chew Stream. This is gonna be really fun and just uh, just a real joy for me um, because I got one of my best buddies on the stream, Mr. Steven Silver himself. Woohoo! Hello, Wes. And uh, of course, I got my sidekick Masse on the stream as well to help us out. Hey guys. All right, so for those of you that are new to the stream, welcome, and uh, just to kind of let you know how it works there's a chat to the right side of the screen on live stream um, and uh, you can type in your questions in there and just make sure that you type in the word question in capital letters before your question that way we'll be able to spot your question a lot easier and uh, answer it a lot more effectively um, so what you see here is actually this is an exercise that I was doing uh, in one of the previous streams I was just taking a very simple composition just trying to make something out of it and so um, that's what will be on screen today is just taking that grayscale very very loose sketch and you know defining it because that seems to be something that's hard for a lot of people I know is hard for me before you know you have your sketch now how do you detail it out how do you bring it to more of a finish uh, even though I don't think I totally go into a finish here but anyways uh, welcome Steven thank you so much for taking some time out to uh, hang out oh yeah no this is awesome we did it that one time before and this was really cool I think it worked out really well there were a lot of great questions uh, that we were able to shoot back and forth with and it, it was great no oh, totally um, we we're just talking about the Annie's uh, Nico and the Sword of Light has been nominated for two Annie Awards uh, mm -hmm. so Kay and I are coming to visit you in LA and you know, check out the Annie's for the first time. Now, you've been to the Annie's a bunch of times. Yes, yes. It, I mean, it's a really fun time. You know, again, just uh, one of those places where just it's a... Uh, because the animation community really is small, you know. So when you go there, it's like almost like a little mini animation comic convention. You know, you just get to see all the, you know, just the faces. And, you know, it's, it's, they put together a pretty good show, you know, every time. So it's a lot of fun. Now what I kind of think of when I hear about the Annie's is uh, kind of like CTN with awards. Right. <laughs> yeah. With no tables, right? Right. There you go. There's no pressure. The only pressure people have at the Annie's, unfortunately, are the people who do get nominated because they go there just with their anticipation and they're nervous and it's, you know, it's a scary thing and then you go there and then um, it's funny because um, it's, I was listening on a radio show with these uh, guests or these people who, it was with Tina Fey and she was talking about the Academy Awards. She said the Academy Awards are horrible. People don't understand. You go there and everyone has this built up sort of energy but they're they're nervous because it's the academy awards and so there's this almost like lull in you know with people talking a lot and then people are kind of in a cheery mood and then all of a sudden the awards happen and then when the people that don't get an award then all of a sudden it turns into bashing and just this and that she said it's a nightmare <laughs> So that, that's all you got to do at, at the Annie Awards, you know, they go through that little nerve-wracking aspect. But other than that, it's awesome. Yeah, and for those of you that don't know what the Annie Awards are, uh, it's kind of like the Oscars of the animated uh, film and television industry, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's really something that they um, at one point wanted to try to add, put on TV, but it never went through. But that's what it is. It is the, yeah, the Oscars of animation. It's really, really cool. It's so awesome that they even do it. Now, I've seen, like, you know, some celebrities also nominated. Do they show up? Do they go to these things? Yeah, yeah. Some of them do, for sure. Um, because they got a lot of great uh, guest speakers, you know, people that come up and present the awards. Uh, but they do. So, uh, you know, because people, uh, especially if they're involved in it, a lot of them do voice acting. So they come and it's, that's a huge part of their business uh, is the voice acting. Like they, they love it just as much, especially the features. So you'll do, you get some of those guys coming through. So it's really cool. I remember um, 
I don't know if you went to the first Spectrum Live uh, convention. No. Mm -mm. But they they had like an award show there because you know Spectrum the annual uh, art the art annual uh, gives out awards and so at the live event they decide to give out awards you know for that and so you knew if you were nominated. Oh right? okay. And nice. Yeah, K and I were both nominated for stuff, and yeah, it was totally nerve wracking. <laughs> You know, it's just like half of you doesn't want to go up there. Half of you, of course, does. And right, does. right. <laughs> half of you is just, you know, shit in your pants just thinking, what am, what am I going to say if I go yeah, up there? Yeah, exactly. Do you have a speech ready? What are you going to say? What are you going to do? Are you going to cry? You yeah. know, when you're up there with emotion, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I didn't win. I was nominated uh, with uh, Jean-Baptiste Mange. As you oh, know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, James Gurney. So I didn't mind losing to those guys. That's great company, though, to, to be with, you know, but uh, you know, that, that's where you got to take those guys out, man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, I was at this convention. It was called the National Caricaturist Network at the time. And it's a great organization. Now it's called ISCA. It's like the International Society of Caricature Artists. And for any of you guys that love to draw caricatures out there, it's a really great organization. They got a website, isca.org or something like that. And they um, every year they would have a guest speaker. But it's all the artists. They could be up to 300, 400 artists from around the world. And basically you're all competing, but you're learning at the same time. So it's really cool. Everyone's drawing caricatures of each other. And you get a space on the wall and you get to draw. And it's a really... Um, great event and then they give awards out uh, at the at the end so I remember they give out a bunch of awards right? a bunch of awards yeah for different things like you know best color most exaggerated you know best likeness all these different things and then they have all these other different competitions you're getting awards for and then they have the final three awards like the golden nosy silver nosy and bronze for the top three all around so the top 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 one you want to get is the golden nosy. Yeah, exactly. That's the golden nosy one. But the funny thing is, is when, when I went there my first year, I can't remember what year it was, I came in like ninth place, right? And I came in and I went up there and they gave me an award for like being ninth place. And it was, I was so overwhelmed with emotion, I just started crying. <laughs> And, you know, in front of everyone, it's like, dude, you won ninth place. What are you crying for? I'm just like, man, this is just great, man. It's just like so awesome just to be up here and I appreciate it. You know, it's like so funny, you know. You never know what's going to happen. But uh, <laughs> so anyway, doesn't matter what place you come in. The fact of the matter is as long as you, you do your best, follow the Boy Scout motto. Just do your best and, uh, and let, let everything else just happen. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, you know, y you also won the Golden Nosy Award. Yeah, yes, yeah. Now, I didn't try on that one for some reason. I think I was <laughs> making a few drinks in my system. So, <laughs> so there, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It's just like, um, yeah, the overall thing that you do on that is like you're being judged on uh, just everything, your overall for everything that you've uh, done through that. So that was really cool. I think I won the year, like Sebastian Kruger was there as, as a guest, uh, if, I, if I remember, um, which was just awesome because uh, to be in front, you know, see that guy who was really, you know, one of my art heroes uh, to be in the audience when that happens, that was really, uh, that was really cool. Now, um Here's a question, you know, if you, say you're an unknown characterist, you know, and uh, you're still drawing the same way that you're doing, and everybody that came to that one where you won the Golden Nosy, uh, you know, nothing else has changed except for the fact that you are a complete unknown. Right. Okay, and if you had your section on the wall and you put everything up on that wall, the exact same stuff. Mm hmm But you didn't talk to anybody. Right. And you just went to your hotel room. You know yep. what I mean? And you didn't converse with anybody. Do you feel like that matters? In terms of, like, who gets the 
a war. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, because it's really, it's all so much based around, um, you know, there's all these different competitions. So you have to almost just like win in all these different types of categories. And what it comes down to is, you know, people, they, they you know, they do win because it is so, that's what I love about it. What's different about this, like, like um, you know, there's definitely, you could say there's competitions out there where it's biased and it becomes, well, that guy's my friend and that's, I'm going to vote for him and, you know, and all this, or I know his name and I'm going to vote for him. But what's great about this, it is purely, all you're given really is a number on the wall. Your name isn't even on the wall. Um, so it doesn't matter. It's always, everything is always based around uh, just the different competitions that you that you win, that you clearly win, and and everyone votes. So it's not just a committee of people voting. Everyone has to go around on the last day and start judging. So it's clearly a visual um, um, uh, sort of competition, which is which is a really cool you know thing. So you could be doesn't matter who you are. You could be totally unknown, and you know for sure it happens all the time. You know with that. Okay, so it is very much kind of like a blind voting yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I know competitions, of course, the people that are selected as the winners, they're always very talented and all this stuff, but, you know, you kind of been around the block enough times to know that a lot of these competitions, you also have to do the schmoozing. You have to have the skills, Yeah. but then you also have to do a little networking as well to really push it over over the edge right. i would say in all honesty not with this one with this sort of show with this sort of um the way that set this one up that i would say i i totally agree with you on on all around because it's all about you know what this industry is all about and we can sort of springboard into this is uh, my feeling it's all about the connections and it is all about um just just people and, and connecting and having relationships and that's really huge thing that doesn't get talked about you know honestly a lot um it's all about how well can you draw how good are you how this how that but so much of it besides that is you got to have the confidence you got to be able to talk to people reach out because there's, there's so many people i even worked with in the studios where they were talented but i don't even remember their name because they never came out of their cube or their office and they never interacted with people and it was um, and therefore when jobs come up they say hey do you know any prop designers do you know any background designers like I just think of the people that I communicated with otherwise even my students uh, whoever uh, people that I you know get in contact with people I meet at conventions who show me their work and I go wow this person's got talent those are the connections that these are the people that I refer to like I get calls from people or emails from all different sorts of things where someone's just like hey I'm looking to do a children's book and I need an artist you know for that do you have any recommendations can you do it? well I'm, I'm I don't want to do it that's not my bag baby and um, I, but I'll I'll refer to people that I know but how do I know you if you're not reaching out if you're not connecting if you're not doing that and that to me is so huge in this industry that because like I said it's a small industry um, really out here and you know that you're out here all the time and you know do a lot so uh, you see the same faces a lot uh, definitely definitely and it's it's interesting you know also there's like the kind of flip side of those people that never come out to nothing and right. then they develop their you know careers and then they come out and then all of a sudden everybody wants to meet them right right right, right. So they kind yeah of almost like store it up <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no that could be a thing it's, but but see that's purely based on skill level yeah. you're not going to get to that you're not going to have that if you don't have the mad skills where you know you could see someone who is there they got the skill they're not like they're, they're no Norman Rockwell or you know or anyone to that level. Again, you don't have to be, but those people um, because they're so good at connecting with people and building relationships, and they're on time and they're professional and they got all these other great things. Those people get work too. So don't ever. I don't want people to ever think, oh, you gotta be freaking you know the the top of the food chain in order to get any work. You don't. I think part of it has to be you got to be good. You got to have a skill level, but you got to be personable too. 
Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> to, to make your chances the best that they can be, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me see. We got uh, Nacho, uh, Nacho Libre. No, um, he said, uh, "Oh, hi, Bobby. First of all, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to draw with you and challenge us to become better in our craft. Sometimes I feel so alone in Spain." Hey, you know what I would say to you, Nacho? Is you know the thing is, is this take it? It's all about initiative too. About maybe you should start. I did this when I was in San Diego, just with one of my friends. We started a drawing group um, in San Diego, well, just with friends. You know, you just what you do is you just grab one friend, and then all you guys go out to the coffee shops and you start drawing, and then all of a sudden you grab another friend and you join you. Before you know it, there's six, seven of you going to the coffee shop, going wherever, go, <coughs> going to the bars, <coughs> excuse me, and sketch. So um, I'd say if you uh, have that opportunity, you know, try to do that for sure. If you just really, I guess it comes down to your faith in not, you know, not in religion, but your faith in what it is you're doing and your, and your belief in what it is that you're doing and knowing that these doors have been closed on me and slammed. It's like, you could say the same for like what J.K. Rowling's was rejected by like 300 publishers. She was rejected by almost, the, yeah, it was like, was it 300 or 30? I think maybe even like 30. I don't think there were that many publishers. Like 30 different um, publishing people said no to J.K. Rowling. This is a horrible idea. And how, well, why would she have not just quit and given up? And um, I think you just, you just got to, I think you just know somehow inherently or you know what it is sometimes, maybe just be really listening to those whispers where you do slowly give up on things, but you keep, I think it's just so much observation and paying attention because all of a sudden you're, you're in conversation with someone and they, and you hear something, they say, hey, you know what, you know, Disney's sort of looking for a sort of wacky blah, 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 you know, and you were paying attention and you were listening or it comes up and you see something, you're reading an article, you pick up an article in a magazine and you read it and it and all of a sudden taps into the nerve of what you were doing again and you keep seeing these things and I think maybe that's what uh, projects it in all honesty um, because, and I, yeah, I, I, I don't know, I think it's an individual gut gut feeling, you know. Yeah, because it's like you could ask your friends, you can listen to your own sound logic, Yeah. but sometimes your logic is not too sound. Sometimes no. your friends are the worst people to ask. Absolutely. I, yeah. I forget if you told me this, but like the, the person that invented the radio, his own friends uh, had him committed to a mental hospital. Oh, no, no, I hadn't heard that. That's crazy. Yeah, so it's like, how do you really, I guess, um, you just, you got to find that, that good inner circle. Yeah, well, yeah, without, yeah, and just honest people, I mean, I stopped showing my artwork to my parents when I was like 18 years old, because they would always tell me how brilliant I was, you know, mm -hmm. oh, it's so good, you're such a great artist, and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm sick and tired of you guys telling me how, how much you like my work, and it was horrible you know, at the time when I look back at it. But again, they're my parents and they wanted to show support or your friends. They're going to show you support where you got to get out of that circle. You got to get away from family and friends to who will surround you at times. And it's great to have that encouragement, you know, without a doubt. But you got to sometimes step into the real world, too, because I've met artists who, who they're fooled by the fact that from their parents to their friends, who have told them their work is good and they'll mention that to me. Yeah, I'm, you know, my fa everyone really likes that. Now, who's everyone? Well, my friends and my family. Well, I'm going to give you a dose of reality here, you know, and this is what you need to hear. Um, because I'm, I, I like to be very forthright with people. I'm not going to uh, BS you, you know. I'm not going to tell you your work's good if I don't think it's good. Um, and I think it's so important to surround, yeah, get, get in front of some real professionals. Make sure people who are working in the industry Get your get them to give you some true feedback and push you in a direction because they're the only ones that can really tell you the truth. You know. Yeah, and it's not like we're you know you're trying to build your portfolio up to a point where people say, okay, that's good. Yeah. You know, it's it's also super important to remember what Silver was saying before, 
that you know really the ones that get ahead are are devoted to constantly learning new things yes yes uh, yes watering a plant man yeah in order for anything to grow you gotta water it you gotta just give it some love and you know and nurture it and that's what you just gotta do with your art you just have to constantly just nurture it and gain knowledge and it's not like riding a bike that's for sure you, you know, know something to add to that I don't know why this kind of went into my head but you're saying you know growing a plant it's got water and stuff like that and it's interesting because it's like the best plants grow from shit mm -hmm. right so it's like you have some shit in your life it's yeah. not good you don't like it it stinks you yeah. know you want to get out of there a lot of times that is the best fertilizer yeah right <laughs> for your your plant career <laughs> yeah absolutely and we're not saying to go jump in a sewer or anything and stand there and uh, and surround yourself with all the with all the crap and think that you can grow it's about yeah you're gonna go through some you know really crappy things within your career but you can always come out of it as long as you're willing to you know you got to be open and willing to, to stepping out of it and keep moving forward yeah and and as you're doing that um, something to remember is you know what what do you fill your mind with do you fill it up with your dreams or the crap, the problems. Yeah, you right. You know, got to focus on your dreams. Yeah. You let that yeah. crap be the gas in your car of dreams <laughs> to get you to your destination, yeah. I guess. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Um, a yeah. couple last questions. So Brent says, uh, do you think learning anatomy is the most important skill to polish on the journey to becoming a master draftsman? Um, I, you know, I personally think so. Uh, I think if you want to become a really good, solid draftsman, you want to get to the level of, you know, again, I, I love my heroes like Lion Decker and Rockwell and all these guys. You know, I think it's it's so important because it, it really gives you a great, solid learning foundation to where you can truly understand the forms and construction and building upon that and I think it, it definitely helps uh, without a doubt again you got to know what your intention is what what are you trying to accomplish within the work that you're you're doing as you're learning this and you're learning all about anatomy are you doing it because you want to be uh, you know do illustrations um, that are really you know tight like that or are you more of a cartoonist and do you need to know anatomy to be a great cartoonist absolutely not do you need to know anatomy to be a, a good character designer no you really don't you know it's like you, I, for me it's very much a shape language but again knowing what well, what is your ultimate you know goal and I think just having that foundation absolutely will you know will help you and guide you if you want to get into gaming and you're doing illustrative work or I think that plays a huge role totally start off with what your actual goal is yeah you know, it's like yeah. do you need to learn how to draw a person to draw a car no right yeah yeah do you need, need to know how to draw a car to draw a person no no yeah all right so next question says um so this comes from Nacho again. What's up, Nacho? So you wrote, uh, do you sometimes get so intense, intense about art that you get bored and you feel that the whole world, that this, that the whole art world is not for you? Do you think the solution is to get away from art for a time? So I guess what he's saying is, you know, do you? get bored of art sometimes uh, whether it's through getting too intense about art I don't know how that would happen but uh, yeah if do you ever get bored of art and what do you do to kind of get yourself back on that saddle I mean I know that I do I mean I, I mean I've been drawing so long and so hard and so much that there's definitely times where I get not, not bored of art, but bored of the process of, say, you know, maybe designing where I get a new challenge. Yeah, I got to design this character. I'm like, ah, I'm just not feeling it. Or even with the art, where I think it's important to take the breaks. You know, I mean, to do try do other things. But I think what I do for me 
when I get bored with the actual drawing process. I, I love I love coming up with ideas, so I'll never stop coming up with ideas, and I write those down, and so I, I've turned into a little writing. Um, I start writing more, not not writing scripts or anything like that, but just coming up with even inventions. Like I come up with inventions all the time. That hey, we're really missing this sort of toothbrush. If we had a better toothbrush that does this, it would be so much better. Or my last invention was how to freeze poop, so I could pick up my dog's poop in the backyard a lot easier. But I start I start going through the whole process and I start thinking about these things. <laughs> Um, and because sometimes I, I do get bored with that and it's okay. So don't feel bad about yourself or anything else and just know that you're going to go through that from time to time. Um, but it'll, it'll all come back, but don't beat yourself over the head. Uh, that's awesome. Love to see your poop freezing uh, <laughs> technology. Um, so next question. Okay. So next question goes, uh, uh, this person writes, the technology is evolving every day. There are a few softwares or upgrades every year. What will you suggest to cope or get over it without being stuck at it? Oh, just because there's new software. Every, yeah, all the time. Yeah, no, I think that's part of like, what Bobby was saying in the reality is just evolution. Everything's be devoted to learning. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, and the thing is, in all honesty, yeah, technology keeps stepping up. You get programs, even like Photoshop, and it keeps improving. You know, it's you, you, it's still the foundation. You, you know how to use Photoshop. You know how to use one of them. You can figure it out, you know, with the other ones and, you know, some of these. I'm not too familiar with all the animation programs and all these other crazy softwares. But, um, you know, I, I think if you learn the basics, the foundation, the fundamentals, from those programs, they, those companies themselves aren't trying to trick everyone to the point where they want to completely throw you off. They're just trying to improve upon it and make it easier. I don't think they're going to, you know, I, I think you just sort of like deal with it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you got to, you know, who likes to learn new stuff that they're going to be bad at in the beginning when they took so long to become good at something? Yeah, right. right it's a lot easier when you just kind of stink at everything yeah. to learn stuff because you kind of stink at everything. But once yeah. you start working professionally, you start getting income, people, you know, you start getting demand for what you do and you're doing it well, that's when it really gets hard to learn because now I got to learn some new thing where I completely stink at it and it's going to take me months before I get good. That yeah. seems to be like my big thing. Like, ugh, I it's so hard to get me to learn something new. But what I found was tell yourself you don't have a bloody choice. You have no choice in this. You must keep learning. And that's, you know, if you want to be a successful artist, that is who you want to be. You want to be that person that's just gobbling up knowledge consistently regularly all the time like I go to 10 workshops a year at least you know and and right now actually I'll show you something I've been doing just you know I, I was saying in an interview before I was saying I, I just started um, I did Daisy to me and Robert Kondo's class before uh, where I watched the lessons but I didn't do the assignments so now I'm doing the assignments. So I just, it's not the best, you know, definitely not by far, but this is just. And that's okay, you know, I mean, that's the bottom line is when it comes down to it, it's like that you put in the effort and you tried it and you did it and it wasn't the best the first time, but can you imagine by the time you get to number 20? Exactly, you know? exactly. That's exactly what I'm thinking. So I'm going to show my shame until yeah. my shame looks pretty Go. damn good. Show your shame! Show your shame! Repent. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, let me go to the last question here. This one from Lucas. So he says, I'm 30. Freelancing. Uh, effects designer. Uh, since a few years. Art school would be great, but really can't afford this. Are there any completely self-taught plus successful concepts concept artists out there 
starting at my age. And somebody wrote in there, Fred Lang. Fred Lang. You remember Fred Lang, Stephen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So absolutely. Fred Lang started when he was 40 or something like that, you know, as well as, um, you know, our buddy Alberto, Alberto Ruiz. He started seriously when he was, what, 30? Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, uh, Colonel Sanders, who started Kentucky Fried Chicken, opened up that when he was 72 years old, you know. It's like, it, it's never too late, you know. I think as long as you're willing, you know, to do it, you just got to, again, it's all about building up your momentum, building up your portfolio, um, and putting yourself out there. And so it doesn't matter what age you are, you know, and the reality is most people, when they see your work, they're not going to know how old you are when you post it on, if you're submitting your portfolio, if you don't have it, you know, you don't write, I was born in 1972 on my resume. I don't need to write that, you know? So it's just like, um, yeah, you know. Yeah, and honestly, I, I challenge anybody, I really just challenge anybody to do, like, of course, do the premium classes if you can with the feedback, but if you can't yeah. afford that, you know, most people they can afford a hundred forty four dollars for a year of education yeah get the subscription do the assignments and tell me you don't improve yeah do the assignments that's it that's you know, the best thing i challenge anybody out there to actually watch the lesson do the assignments and see if you know see if you don't see a difference see if your friends don't see a difference in your art because right. that's yeah. it's been proven you know what I mean? So absolutely, 30 years old is definitely not too long. Um, now we're getting towards the end of our stream here. So I just wanted to mention a couple of things for those of you that want to learn, are interested in learning, or want to come and see us, come out to some workshops. So I want to tell you about uh, Montreal, March 12th and 13th. It's going to be with character designer, art director from Pixar, Daniel Ariega, story artist, director, Chris Pern. Pixar's Louis Gonzalez, Luke de Marchelier, uh, Nathan Fawkes, and the ultimate Mr. Steven Silver himself will be there. So that's going to be awesome. And then uh, the week after, Florence, March 19th, it's going to be with me, it's going to be with Ryan Lang, Helen Mingju Chen. Then we have Seattle, April 7th and 8th, Marcelo Vignali, Dice Tsutsumi, Robert Kondo, Terrell Whitlatch, Mike Yamada, and myself. And if you want something super hardcore, the in-house workshop where you're staying in uh, in our Imaginism house just outside of Montreal, Canada, you and three other artists are staying with your mentor for 30 days. Plus, we, you know, will fly in a guest artist such as you know Stephen Silver, for example, went there and uh, teaches you. You break bread with them. You know, it's the most intense and the most amazing experience um, and of course today today is the very last day of our boxing week sale which for the very first time in the whole existence of schoolism 10 years that we're actually having a sale off of premium classes where you can get feedback from Steven Silver and all the other schoolism teachers hundred dollars off we've never done this before this is a big thank you to everybody that made 2015 so awesome and last but not least i have uh my audiobook perfect bait it's free to download until end of january uh, it's for artists and it's just to send some good positive vibes out there so i want to thank Masse for taking notes for me all this stream and uh, of course the audience and the biggest thanks goes to my buddy Steven thank you so much for hanging out with us hey thank you thanks for putting all this together it was awesome my pleasure it's always uh, great to hang out and I'll, I'll see you in February but hopefully we can do another stream like this uh, before that yeah absolutely it's always good always good Right on. And uh, you can follow Stephen at, where, where are you most active nowadays, Stephen? Well, I mean, you could, <laughs> um, I think on my, my Facebook, I have my Facebook, which is, uh, you know, face, I think we'll put the link there, but I got my Facebook page. 
I do my uh, Monday morning motivation um, art talks on Mondays. Um, and then you could just follow me at silvertunes.com. I got a bunch of stuff there. And uh, if you live in L.A., I, I got this home studio mentorship that oh, I just yeah. started doing. Yeah, yeah well, let I'm just everybody know about advice. that. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool thing. I started in my uh, about 12 years ago, actually, and then in my uh, detached studio that I have, and now I've gone full circle where I've created this great little environment now where I'm just taking on five students. It's an application process because um, I want everyone to be of sort of like-minded skill, um, and I'm doing it out of my, I built this classroom in my detached studio at my house here in Simi Valley, and you can apply, just go to Silver Tunes, uh uh, silverdrawingacademy.com and uh, if anyone's interested in applying you guys can do that and be one of the five right on and if you are not as lucky to be one of the five or if you don't live in the LA area like I was saying before highly recommended Steven Silver's uh, character design fundamentals of character design as well as advanced character design you know if you want to do character design in the film and television gaming whatever industry you want yeah yeah it's growing it's growing you know what i love it's like every time i i, I just got to say this before we uh we bow out here is when i went to go see you know star wars uh with my son and you're sitting and you're watching all the previews and they're showing all the animated projects that are coming out that disney's doing and you know pixar all the so many things coming out and to hear, you watch these other trailers and th there's no reaction in the crowd. All of a sudden they put on these animations and they're showing the trailers and you hear nothing but laughter. And it's always a reminder that animation is never going away. As long as there's kids on this planet, animation, art, cartooning, illustration is never going to vanish. It's going to be here forever. It's the most um, timeless. Yeah, it's timeless. So it's a great industry to be involved in, a part of. So never have that fear. Even though things are evolving and changing and they're being done in different places in the world, it's never going to go away. There's always going to be new things coming around. Um, so, you know, it's be a part of it because there's, there's going to be plenty of work for you. Totally. And, you know, it was like Bambi was made in, what, the 40s? Right, yeah, back way back, yep. You still. know, it's like how many people nowadays have still seen Bambi and how many other 40s films have they watched? Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Know, it's totally, that's, that's the proof. Like, yeah, it, yeah, they're still so buying true. the merchandise. You know, you still see it on t-shirts and everything else. I mean, again, animation, as long as there's kids, that's it. Yeah, and you don't need to grow up either. No. <laughs> like, you can be a kid forever. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Right well, on. happy new year, everyone. Yeah, happy new happy year. New year. Tomorrow, I'm doing the stream, I'm doing another stream with my buddy, uh, right on. Jason Siler. Right. right on. So, uh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, everybody. And uh, everybody, have an awesome day. This is Bobby Chu, Masay Seki, Stephen Silver, signing off. Adios. Hi, this is Steven Silver, and I've been an animation character designer for television animation for more than 17 years. I've developed characters for shows such as Kim Possible, Danny Phantom, Clerks the Animated Series, and many more. In my class, Fundamentals of Character Design with Steven Silver, I will teach you the foundational skills, principles, and techniques that I personally use to create excellent character designs. With each lecture, you will get an assignment, and with your on-time submission of your work you will receive a personalized video feedback video from me which I will draw over the top of your work I will talk about what you did well what you can work on and how you can improve your designs you can also ask me any comments or questions that you might have and I would be happy to answer them my full lesson plan is available on schoolism.com so please check it out all of my lectures and feedback videos are pre-recorded so they will be easily accessible to you no matter where in the world you live. Each student will receive my personal attention so space is limited. Register today. Thank you and I look forward to having you in my class.